Welcome, welcome everybody to Adobe Max 2013. It's so great to be back here in Los Angeles in this wonderful venue. We have a record 5,000 attendees attending with us here live. Thank you for being here. And thousands more that are participating via the internet and the webcast. More than half of you are here for the first time. And for returning attendees, thank you for being here. You will see that Max is rapidly evolving to be the premier creativity conference. I think what makes Max so great is that it is the opportunity for all of us to get together as a community, to share ideas, and to be inspired. But in addition to celebrating community, events like this are where we engage with you to understand how Adobe needs to evolve and celebrate major milestones and advancements as a company. And this year's Max is going to be no different. I recently celebrated 15 years at Adobe. And as I look back, there are so many conferences that represented major milestones in Adobe's history. My first conference, actually, the major one, was in Boston, Seabold Seminars in March of 1999. And it was the leading conference, as all of you know, for desktop publishing, printing, and graphics. There in Boston, we launched the first Adobe product that I worked on, Adobe InDesign, that was referred to at that point as the Quark Killer. And it revolutionized graphic design, giving designers amazing new levels of control and freedom over layout as well as typography. The creative community, all of you were clear in your feedback that Adobe needed to invent a successor to PageMaker and create a great layout application. And the March Seabold event was the beginning of a revolution in page design. I still get a thrill when I see the masterpieces that all of you have created with InDesign, initially for print magazines, catalogs, newspapers, and increasingly now for digital magazines as well as applications on tablets and smartphones. In 2003, we introduced the new Creative Suite at the Guggenheim Museum in New York. Many of you were already using Photoshop and Illustrator, InDesign and Acrobat. And what you wanted from us more than anything else was for our products to work much better together. Creative Suite represented close to a decade of innovation and focused on addressing the challenges in enabling you to create great creative for both print and web on your desktop. It started with many of the basic suite capabilities that all of you are now so familiar with, a common user interface, and a seamless way of dealing with fonts, printing, and transparency. And through the versions that followed, we delivered web technology, we delivered video technology, as well as integrated all of the Macromedia products after the acquisition of Macromedia. And we continued to invent magical new features. At the last Max, 18 months ago, we unveiled our vision for reimagining the future of the creative process with the announcement of the Creative Cloud. In a world where everyone is always connected, you shared your expectations of how your work was changing. You pushed us to focus on touch, enabling mobile access to your assets, and creating a vibrant and creative community. And our goal is to make this process of creative fun, simpler, more connected, and more collaborative. And we think Creative Cloud is the answer. The launch of Creative Cloud last year was just the beginning of a next generation of innovation at Adobe. And we have a ton of exciting news to share with you over the next few days from PostScript to Photoshop, from Creative Suite to Creative Cloud. At Adobe, we have always been driven by a single-minded purpose to help creative people create. It's why we get up every morning. I'm incredibly fortunate to have spent the last 15 years pursuing my passion of working with teams to deliver great creative products to the market. But inspiration and satisfaction for me also comes 
from seeing my son Arjun make magic like this using his camera and our products. An aspiring 18-year-old photographer, Arjun spends all of his time using Photoshop and Lightroom and experimenting with new cameras and lenses and photo sharing sites and applications. Most dinner conversations with him revolve around how our tools need to move faster to keep up with his ideas and to enable him to bring to life his latest project. He is now creating a picture a day for 365 days as he shares his thoughts and wisdom on life before he heads off to college. Knowing that millions of us are engaging with us to create that next generation and the future of this industry is incredibly energizing and motivates and drives all of us here at Adobe. While it has taken thousands of people to develop Creative Cloud, there's one person in particular who has been steering it from the earliest concept to what you will see today. I'm now pleased to introduce the leader of our creative business, David Wadwani, to share with you details on the next major update of the Creative Cloud that we are introducing today. David? Thank you, Shana. Thank you, Shana. That was very nice. Good morning, everyone. And I uh, hope you've been enjoying the beautiful, warm, sunny LA weather. <laughs> um, it's been 18 months uh, since the last Max, and it feels like so much has changed in the industry since then. Uh, certainly all across the industry, but in many ways, especially at Adobe. We've released new applications. We've acquired uh, creative services. We've embraced the open web. We've launched Creative Cloud. And that's just listing a few of the things that we've done. But more importantly, we've committed ourselves to a much bigger vision for the creative world than I think we've ever had before. And we'll walk you through that this morning. And as we do, I think you'll get a sense that this is a big change for all of us. And I think you'll see that we're off to a great start, but we still have a lot to do. But I have no doubt in my mind that this is the mission that we've been meant to be on. And it's the right one. Now, I've been coming to Max for 12 years. And each Max has always had its own very personal identity. The conference has always done a great job of embracing the topics of the day. But I truly believe that this one is going to stand out. It's going to stand out as an important moment when the creative community came together, took a deep look at what technology can truly offer, and embraced the opportunity for change and never looked back. So let's start by talking a little bit about the things that technology now enables, things that, until recently, we couldn't have even imagined. Take, for example, how we opened the show today. As you all walked in and you found your seats, you were surrounded by stunning pieces of art and design. All of that content was pulled live from Behance, a social network with about one and a half million creatives sharing tens of millions of pieces of content. The projects you saw were not pre-selected pre by Adobe. They were all selected by the Behance members. We can't sift through that much content. So we relied on the Behance community. We showed the work that received the most appreciation, and we highlighted the creatives that had the largest followings. The members decided what you saw this morning. As for the opening sequence, over 100 creatives from around the world contributed thousands of assets that were stitched together into the video sequence you saw this morning. <laughs> the production for this required 40 perfectly synchronized projectors filling a quarter acre, a quarter acre of curved screens, <laughs> yeah, and, re and rendering half a billion pixels every single second. Stunning, stunning stuff. And absolutely amazing, but not as amazing as what it tells us about the state of technology today and how it's going to impact the creative process for decades to come. For starters, there are literally no limits on how much we produce and share with each other today. We create two and a half exabytes of data every day now. Let me put that in perspective. It's estimated that humans, in aggregate, from the beginning of time to the beginning of the 21st century, created five exabytes of data. 
We do that now every two days. So the question then quickly becomes, how do we make sense of it all? And the answer is, we rely on each other. We all pitch in. We tweet about the things that interest us. We like the posts on Facebook that make us smile. And we appreciate the art on Behance that inspires us. The fresh, the funny, and the interesting stuff bubble to the top, and the rest simply fade away just by being excluded from the conversation. Now, these trends have already had a profound impact on global society. <laughs> without them, we would never know the power of Diet Coke and Mentos. Where would we be without that? Or Gangnam Style. And while some of it makes you cringe, <laughs> or perhaps I should speak for myself and say some of it has made me cringe, it's part of our modern culture. You can't escape it. You just need to embrace it. But beyond the impact on pop culture, these social models are going to have a profound impact on how we all collaborate and get our work done. And that includes you. How you find your creative inspiration, how you work with your peers, and how you publish your finished work. It's all changing. We're fortunate to live in incredible times. And I believe that we're at the precipice of a creative revolution unlike any other. All of you have access to applications for content creation, devices that let you express, ex express yourselves in new ways, social models that bring like-minded creatives together, simple approaches to collaboration, and ways to find an audience for your work, but they're not well integrated. Most of you spend hours every day creating things in our applications. But these apps do so little to help you find, stay connected to the things that generate your ideas or improve your finished work. Creativity thrives when it's part of a broader conversation. But creation is still too often done in isolation. And mobile devices are completely changing how, what, and where we create. But they aren't effectively tied into the creative process. These are problems we can solve, and that's what drives the vision that we have for Creative Cloud. Now, when we launched Creative Cloud a year ago, it was largely an efficient way to buy and download our CS apps. But our vision for it has always been much bigger. So like in the past, we're going to show you some amazing innovation in our creative applications. We've added hundreds of new features across every major product. But unlike in the past, we've connected these apps to an integrated creative process that we believe will elevate everyone's work. So when you save your work in our applications, your creative files and folders are now automatically synchronized to the cloud and accessible across all of your devices. And because they're in the cloud, you can share the folders with your peers. These group folders are then automatically synchronized across their laptops and their devices. But in today's world, why limit yourself to collaborating with people you know? Why not benefit from the millions of creatives worldwide? So we connect your tools and files to Behance as well, and a thriving network with millions of creatives. Now, as you perfect your work, we let you aggregate it into finished projects in an online portfolio, so others in the community can see and appreciate your work, and you can build your reputation and your network of creatives. And finally, we streamline the effort required to actually publish all of this work, either as a personal website or as an app deployed through the App Store. And we tie it all together in a single integrated experience across all of your devices. So you always know what's happening with your work, and you always know what's happening in your creative network. All of this makes up the creative cloud. Your creative applications, your assets and settings, collaboration, your community, your online portfolio, your finished work, all of it makes up the creative cloud. In short, we're putting you and your content at the center of a creative process by connecting you to the people that matter most every step of the way. Now, with that as the background, I couldn't be more excited to officially announce the next generation of our creative apps. Going forward, our creative applications will be branded CC, not CS. CC represents the next generation of Adobe apps that are fully integrated with Creative Cloud. Photoshop CC, Illustrator CC, InDesign CC, and all the other apps you know and love 
will continue to run on your desktop, whether you're connected to the internet or not. But they're intimately tied into the process that I just described when you're connected.